Hello, this is Formal Process. I'm here today to talk to you about a visualization framework created by Olivia Jack called Hydra. Hydra is available on GitHub, and it's a JavaScript-based framework for using your browser, a webcam, and some scripting to be able to create some fancy visualization that you can use for a variety of your projects. In this tutorial, we'll go over a number of the key functions that are available in Hydra, provide some examples for you to try out on your own, and provide you with a sense for the power of this particular visualization framework so that you can uh, consider it for your own use. For this particular demo, I'll be using live footage so you can see how Hydra can be used for both live performance as well as recorded performances. Let's start with the basics. Here we have some JavaScript that is taking our camera and rendering it directly to the screen. We're then going to be modifying this particular script and adding additional functions and seeing what they uh, do to the actual output. The first function we're going to try is to insert a saturate function between the source and the output function so that we can interact with the colors that are going to be displayed. By using a low value for saturate, it will mute the colors of the live stream. Changing the value to a high value, greater than 1, will make the colors brighten. Hydra has a number of functions that can directly interact with color. The next one we're going to try is called Colorama. Let's see how we can apply this to our live video. Colorama takes a single value, so we can just uh, swap out the saturate function with the Colorama function to see how it interacts. You can get some really wild colors at this particular operation. Next, we're going to check out some of Hydra's ability to manipulate the geometry of a particular uh, video. We're going to start out with uh, my favorite, which is the kaleidoscope. With the kaleidoscope function, we set the number of uh, iterations for a given visualization, so how many times it repeats that image. So we set a value of 3, we get 3 images, we set a value of 7, we get 7 images, and we can set that even higher to get a compelling repeated pattern. Next, let's try another function. Let's use the pixelate function and see how it interacts with our live image. Pixelate takes two values, an X and a Y value representing the number of different pixels the image is going to be composed into. Let's replace the kaleidoscope function with the pixelate function and set some low values for these pixels. Next, let's set them to some higher values and see how they interact with the video. The next function we're going to try is repeat function, where we can make duplicate copies of the image and display that live. With repeat, we specify an x and a y value. So with 3 and 3, we get 9 total images that appear on the screen. The next function we're going to try is the rotate function. This one also takes two values, an initial start and then a value for how quickly the image will rotate. Let's apply rotate after the repeat function. If you notice, the whole image will rotate on the screen. But if we move this function before the repeat, uh, we'll notice a different type of rotation. So the order of operations really does matter in this visualization. This particular tool really rewards experimentation, so I encourage you to change the order of operations every once in a while to see how that impacts the actual image being displayed. The second value in the rotate function changes the, how fast uh, this image rotates. So higher values means it rotates a whole lot faster. The next operation we're going to try is the scroll function. There's a scroll X and a scroll Y. Scroll X moves uh, things left and right. Scroll Y means up and down. 
So let's try and see how that, that interacts with our image. And now our image is moving from the right to the left. The next set of functions are going to be under the area of modulators, much like in uh, synthesizer synthesis, where you have modulators that manipulate the audio sound. We can use modulators to manipulate the video images in different ways. Let's go back to our core image of just the webcam footage and see how these modulators interact with the webcam footage. I'm just going to choose some values that come directly from the OJAC uh, function tutorial and see how it makes the image very wavy. In this example, we have an oscillator that we're using to manipulate the modulate function. Changing the modulation values can yield dramatic results. Once again, I would encourage you to experiment with different values to see how they interact with your images. Hydra has a modulated kaleidoscope that when you apply an oscillator to it can yield some nice moving kaleidoscope funky results. Let's change some more kaleidoscope values to see how they interact with the video. The next function we're going to try is the modulated pixelate function. Let's swap out the kaleidoscope function with the pixelate and see what happens. By manipulating the oscillator, we can change the results of this pixelate function. Instead of using an oscillator, we can use another input function to this modulate. In this case, we'll use a noise function. Noise is another generator inside Hydra that we can apply to a variety of modulators. There's another generator function we can use called a Voronoi function that can generate ge geometric shapes. It includes parameters for scale, speed, and blending. The smaller values for scale, uh, the bigger the geometric images. If we change the uh, blending factor to be a higher value, 
um, it creates these water droplet type visualizations. We can also apply other geometric manipulators to our generator functions inside the modulate pixel function. For example, we can have the Veranoi uh, function actually scroll in an X direction and that may create some more dramatic kinds of results. Let's slow this thing down. Instead of pixelating, we can use the modulate repeat function to create a different kind of modulated visualization. The next modular we're going to try is the modulate rotate function, which will allow us to create some wavy patterns of our visualization. In this case, because rotate is a modulated function, it's actually bending the video in different directions. Now let's try one of these other modulators, the modulate scale. In this case, scale will allow us to zoom in or zoom out within our image. By using one of our functions from before, the repeat function, we can make our overall display repeat several times. Let's throw a kaleidoscope in there too. We can change the color. Whoa, too much color. Another way we can manipulate the image being displayed is by using an operator. 
an operator lets us combine multiple sources into a unified image. We can take the original video that's being sourced here with the full webcam image and combine it with this fancy kaleidoscope image um, and merge them together into a unified display. The add function allows us to combine these two sources or adding the different colors together. We can also use a blend function uh, as a different type of way that we can merge these two uh, images together. All of these combination functions accept a parameter at the end, which is usually the amount that you're trying to blend one image with the other. We have a diff function. mask function, a multiply function, all of these do slightly different things when you're combining these multiple images. Here's another example of using Hydra to manipulate webcam footage uh, to create a kaleidoscope and scaling effect. I used this effect in a recent video because it looked kind of like traveling through warp speed. Now we can just have fun playing around with the parameters and uh, mixing functions together, adding geometric operations to our images and to our generators. The OJEC interface allows us to directly code inside a web browser and see the results. You'll see me pressing the run button in order to actually uh, run the JavaScript that I'm writing. But if you don't want to see the script on your screen, you can actually press Control, Shift, and the H to toggle this code display on or off. To capture the results of Hydra into a video, I would highly recommend using OBS Studio as a way to either live stream or capture the video that's being displayed. As you can see here, you don't have to be a great JavaScript programmer in order to use Hydra. You just have to know how to add functions together to produce some interesting output. The documentation for Hydra includes a function guide. and You can see I've been using that to copy and paste some interesting examples into my visualization. I hope this tutorial was helpful for you and I look forward to seeing your creations in the near future.